Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Today I want to talk about the Grand Solar Minimum. And why is that? Because I don't want people to forget that we are headed into a Grand Solar Minimum. With all of the things that are going on, and with all of the things that consume our minds nowadays, especially watching mainstream media and even watching a lot of YouTube channels that have so much stuff going on, it seems like there's a thousand things going on at once, that this is one thing that we really don't want to forget about. We don't want to forget that we are headed into a grand solar minimum. Now, I found this article that says that NOAA is confirmed that we are headed toward a grand solar minimum. Now, let me explain to those of you that may not know what a solar minimum is, a solar maximum, or a grand solar minimum. The sun has cycles, right? It's a cyclic thing. Every 11.3 years or so, the sun goes through a solar maximum where we get warmer weather. And every 11.3 years or so, it goes through a solar minimum where we get cooler weather. Now, what makes our weather warmer or cooler? The sunspots. During a solar maximum, the sun has more sunspots. The more sunspots on the sun, the more energy that the sun shoots our way, right? That the sun throws towards the earth. The less sunspots during a solar minimum, the less energy that the sun throws our way. How does that affect us? It affects us in many ways. So during a solar maximum, there's a lot more sunspots and we have a bigger and thicker magnetosphere, right? Which is part of our atmosphere, which is a good thing because it allows to keep a lot of that energy that was thrown into the earth from the sun, keep it inside. And it allows for more of that sun ray of the light to actually come through and feed our plants and allow our plants to grow through photosynthesis, which is what they need in order to grow so that they can feed us and feed our livestock. Now, what happens during a grand solar minimum? There's less sunspots and there's less energy coming towards the earth from the sun. So what does that mean? That means that we have shorter growing seasons and that we just don't get as much energy from the sun as what we normally do. So if we don't get as much energy from the sun as what we normally do during a solar maximum, that means, like I said, we're going to have shorter growing seasons. It's probably going to be a little cooler, and we're just not going to grow as much food as we normally grow. During a grand solar minimum, what happens is, is we kind of like get stuck on a solar minimum cycle for several solar cycles. So the sunspot activity during a grand solar minimum just keeps decreasing every cycle until there's almost no sunspots or very little sunspots. So we get a lot less energy from the sun for several decades in a row. Now, if we go back to the last grand solar minimum, which was called the Maunder minimum, you'll see that between the years 1600 and around 1700, 1750 or so, there was almost no sunspot activity. And if you go back in history and research that time, you'll find that there was famine and that there were wars and change of empires and things like that. Because what happens when the people can't get fed? They raise up and they take over their governments. So I'm not going to read this article for you all, but the title of it is Global Cooling. NOAA confirms full-blown grand solar minimum. And it goes on to explain pretty much what I've told you about the solar cycles and that we are headed into a grand solar minimum and that it's going to last well into the 30s 40s and possibly 50s so all the way up through 2050 that doesn't mean that it's going to get bad at 2050 it's going to mean that it's going to probably be at its worst however it is going to incrementally get worse from here on so that's why i've been saying that i think that food shortages will hit hard around 2024 2025 Okay, that's when I think that food shortages will hit hard because there is not going to be as much food as we normally are used to having. So we're going to have to adjust and improvise and get used to a new way of growing food. For example, if you grow food at home yourselves, if you have a garden, maybe you'll want to shift over to a greenhouse, right? Or a hard greenhouse even better because we'll probably have more hail weather events than what we normally have now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to read this entire article. I will leave the link to this article under the description of the video, but I did want to read this small part. And it says, Grand Solar Minimums 
have the potential to hold sunspots at zero for multiple decades. The most famous example is the Maunder Minimum, which lasted from 1645 to 1715, which brought plummeting temperatures, crop loss, famine, and the deaths of hundreds of millions of people across the planet. Unfortunately, history repeats. Climate is cyclic, never linear. But unlike during the Maunder Minimum, there is a twist this time around. We modern humans have another cosmological factor to contend with, Earth's magnetosphere, a key line of defense against incoming cosmic rays is waning at an increasing rate as north and south magnetic poles continue their wander. So pretty much they're saying that at the same time that we are going to have a grand solar minimum that the Earth's magnetosphere is going to get weaker because we have our magnetic poles shifting. The field is expected to be considerably weak by 2040 and as with previous magnetic excursion reversals, these events can lead to an uptick in volcanic, seismic activity, solar outbursts, and even the onset of ice ages. Now I'm not sure about having an ice age, ladies and gentlemen, but the one here that scares me the most is the one that says solar outbursts. Because what they mean by solar outbursts is, is coronal mass ejection. And even though that during a solar minimum or a grand solar minimum, there is considerably less sunspots, there are still some sunspots. But if one of those sunspots throws a CME our way, our magnetosphere is going to be so weakened that it will probably devastate everyone in the planet because the uh, use of electronics and electricity will probably be very greatly hindered. Now, during a time that we are already going through a grand solar minimum to also be hit by a CME that hinders our electrical capabilities, it would be devastating. So let me go ahead and show you this chart. This is a chart that goes back to the 1600s uh, from now. And as you can see here, the Maunder minimum occurred around 1600 to 1700 and change, roughly. But you can see here, that the sunspots were almost none for several decades. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where we're headed. This is what's been predicted for us by NASA and by NOAA. Now, they differ a little bit in the number of sunspots that we're going to have in the next one or two cycles. However, the trend is trending downward. As you can see, it's trending downward. So this is something that we do have to think about. Would I say it's long term? No, it's going to last a long time, but it's starting soon because we are right around here, ladies and gentlemen. We are right around here. And what will happen is, is that during the next solar cycle, right now we're in 25, right? Right now we're starting 25. Actually, we're around here, not here, here. Right now we're starting solar cycle 25. So what will happen is the next solar cycle, which will be 26, will be something like this right here. You see this red? So the high of the next solar cycle will be a lot lower than the high of this solar cycle that we're in now. And as you can see, that the high of the solar cycle that we're in now is considerably lower than the high of the last solar cycle that we were in. So like I said, it's trending down. So what this means, ladies and gentlemen, is that we have a couple of years to get ready and get as much food put away as we possibly can. However, we are going to have to learn how to grow food in an environment where we're not getting that much sun. All right, that's going to be what it comes down to. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got something out of this. Do your own research and let me know if I missed anything or if I just didn't cover something. But the skinny of it is this. We're going into a grand solar minimum. And what that means is, is that the sun is not going to be producing as much energy as it produces now. It's going to be considerably less. We need sunlight in order to grow food. Without sunlight, we can't grow food. So what are we going to do in order to prepare for that and in order to be able to live through that? Even if we can't live through it, what can we do to allow our children to survive and thrive during that era?
Having said that, thank you very much for joining in, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys have a great weekend ahead. Hope to see you on Sunday. We will be doing a few giveaways on Sunday because a few of the winners of the last giveaway never checked in with me. So I'll be giving those things away to people that are in the live stream this Sunday, 12 noon Alaska time, 4 p.m. Eastern time. So hope to see you there, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had a great week and, of course, a good weekend ahead. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm the Alaska Prepper, and I'm out.